Hi friends, welcome to this review of Galaxy Star Pro. I've had this device for about 4 days and boxed it in a separate video as soon as I had it. And the initial impressions were quite positive. It is probably the first from uh, Samsung Android combination to have a 4 inch WVGA screen at sub 7000 price range. That in itself makes a very tempting offer. But how do the other things hold up? Let's find out. Samsung's use of plastic for its phones is no secret by now, however, for a phone of this size and price segment, it doesn't look that bad. The curves on the back make it rather pleasant to hold. The back cover itself fits very well to the main chassis and makes for a very solid feel. Importantly, it isn't that much of a fingerprint magnet unless you're lifting it from a perfect angle. The layout of buttons is very similar to any Samsung phone with volume rockers on the left, the power and lock button on the right. The top has a headphone jack and we have the micro USB port at the bottom. The back cover, when uh, removed, reveals a 1500 mAh battery. I'll just try and open that right now. So there we have it, the 1500 mAh battery. There is also the slot for uh, micro SD card. Over on the front, there is no proximity or ambient sensor, which means you have to manually adjust the brightness to your liking every time there is a, a change in the ambient light. The screen is also a far cry from top WVGA screens. It's definitely superior to other Samsung phones at this price range. The bump in resolution in itself is very handy while reading text or browsing the web. Colors look okay, however the native contrast is poor which degrades rather poorly when viewed at an angle. The CPU remains the same from Galaxy Star which is a 1GHz Cortex A5 so does the 512MB of RAM. We do, we do however have a updated Mali 400 GPU instead of the Mali 300 of the original star. And for reference, if we can quickly open the Nina Mark 2 benchmarking software, it gives a score of 39.3 FPS, which is not necessarily a bad score, although most high end phones have rendered Nina Mark 2 obsolete. The software is mostly stock Android with touch with skin on top. Samsung has refrained itself from modifying many stock applications. For example, a gallery lists everything in grid, and while it does take some time to load the thumbnail previews, once it has, browsing and panning or zooming is rather smooth. Play Music is the default music player. It lists all your album in a card stack format. You do have options to fine tune your equalizer settings in the settings option. And the sound out of this phone is a little flat, but otherwise of really good quality. As always, bundled earphones hardly reveal the true potential of a smartphone as a portable music player. Video playback and quite sadly maxes out at 800 into 480 which is WVGA resolution, which is the resolution of the screen itself. I tried playing HD videos I don't have any right now with the MX player but there, there was a lot of lag which basically means the phone does not have enough power to play HD videos. Also, Samsung uses a very heavy compression while converting its videos with its Sky software. To round off the media experience, the camera app has a similar UI to most of the Samsung smartphones. It does give ample options before shooting your photos, like changing the shooting modes, brightness, white balance, resolution, etc. And more importantly, there is minimum of shutter lag while taking pictures. As soon as you've taken one, you're ready for another. However, the camera can shoot only 2 megapixel fixed focus photos and QVG videos and quite expectedly, the quality is amongst the worst in camera phones. Chrome is the default browser for Star Pro. The rather high resolution screen would have made browsing experience a pleasure had it not been for the low RAM which means pages start to reload while panning around. However. Google Chrome does have its advantages as well. For example, it syncs wonderfully with your desktop Chrome browser. Samsung did modify the phone contacts in the messaging app uh, to keep it in line with other Galaxy phones. From the contacts app, you can swipe on a contact to its right or to its left to call or message the contact. The Samsung keyboard looks alright but misses a key feature the word prediction you can definitely download uh, apps like Swiftly to make up for it finally let me open up Nimble Run to show how its game performance is like
looks okay to me but I'll let you be the final judge of how smooth it is while the Samsung Galaxy Star Pro is amongst the cheapest droids for Samsung its relatively large screen and its slimmer bezels don't necessarily give you that impression but given the price compromises were certain but what's important is that Samsung gave it the best of Android experience as it could the screen is your window to your phone and the WVGA screen definitely makes browsing, testing and playing light games a pleasurable experience in terms of competition for the same Android experience and some additional hardware features and upgrades including a 5 megapixel primary camera and a VGA secondary camera, multiple sensors of print and 3G connectivity, the Galaxy S Duos retails at about 9000 Indian rupees. The fiercest rival to the Star Pro, however, may come from outside of Android. The Lumia 520 simply dwarfs all other phones at this price range with its buttery smooth performance or navigation around the UI and a vastly superior chief set. Build quality and screen quality of the Lumia are arguably better too. Both phones, however, cost more than the Star Pro, which could well be the deciding factor when many young people go shopping. Thanks for watching the video, and until next time, it's goodbye.